All right, so continuing through our examples here, um, a recent survey asked a random sample of Dallas Cowboy fans, do you think Brett Maher is a good kicker? <laughs> the resulting 95% confidence interval for the population proportion who believe he is a good kicker is 0.35 to 0.47. What is the point estimate that was used to create this interval? Where are we going to find said point estimate? Smack dab in the middle of that interval. So I need to know what is the exact middle of that interval. 0.41. So the actual sample that they took 41% of that sample, whatever size it was, 41% said Brett Maher was a good kicker. All right, cool. Now, what's the margin of error? That would be the distance from 0.41 out to either of the estimates. So what is 0.41 to either side? 0 .06. 0.06. Very good. Now, follow-up question. Based on this poll... Follow-up question based on this poll. Do we have convincing evidence that less than half of Dallas Cowboys fans think that Brett Maher is a good kicker? Use the confidence interval to evaluate this claim. Do we have convincing evidence that less than half of the Cowboys fan think that Brett Maher is a good kicker? Yes. Why? Why do you say yes? Okay, so less than half would be less than 50. So since 0.5 is not in the interval and the interval is entirely below... 0.5, we have convincing evidence. So because of the fact that 50% is not one of the possible values in our interval, and the whole interval is below 50%, it appears we have pretty good evidence, convincing evidence, in fact, that Dallas Cowboys fans think it's time to kick the kicker to the curb. That's pretty good, wasn't it? They laughed. All right, cool. Any questions about that? Awesome. All right. Here's another question for you. As a part of a project about response bias, oh no, we're starting to bring in that stuff. Yes, we are. Cody surveyed a random sample of 40 students from his school. Both of Cody's parents are dentists, so many of his survey questions had to do with brushing teeth. One of the questions required students to state aloud whether or not they brush their teeth twice a day. Based on the responses, Cody said he was 90% confident that the interval from 0.79 to 0.96 captures the true proportion of all students at the school who brush their teeth twice a day. What would happen to the width of the interval if the confidence level were increased to 99%? Very good it would get wider if he gets more confident about his guess then that's because he has widened the interval because now he's capturing more possible options for the truth so if he's more confident it's because he now has a wider interval very good when c increases c being the confidence level when c increases the width also increases. Perfect. All right. What would happen to the width of the 90% confidence interval 
If the sample size was increased to 100 students. So we only talked to 40. But what happens if I increase my sample size? Do, if I increase my sample size, do you think we get a more accurate result? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And if I'm getting a more accurate result, then my window doesn't have to be as big. So, it also goes back to this. When N increases, the margin of error decreases. Now... How does that tell me anything about the width? The margin of error is literally how far out you're going. It is literally the width. So when I increase my sample size and my margin of error decreases, then that means that my interval shrinks. It gets narrower. So the width gets narrower. I love that word, narrower. Narrower. <laughs> All right. Um, da, 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 part C. Describe one potential source of bias in Cody's survey. That should say survey. In Cody's survey that is not accounted for by the margin of error. Okay, uh, peer pressure could be a, 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 some bias, yes. Okay, good. What else? The fact that his parents are dentists. Okay, yeah, what else? What? Parents are dentists? Oh, I heard that. Maybe they are. Um, but um, let's, let's again reread the question, y'all. Let's reread this question. Describe a source of bias that is not accounted for by the margin of error. Any, oh, that's so true. Any of the bias is not accounted for by margin of error. Why not? Because margin of error does not have anything to do with bias. It only has to do with sampling variability. Margin of error only accounts... For sampling variability, not any source of bias. Oh no, Miss Lakey gave you a trick question. I'm a horrible human being. I should be a dentist or dead or whatever. All right, cool. Questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, feelings? All right, last thing here. Let's check this one out. The figure below, the figure below shows the results of taking 25 simple random samples from a normal population and constructing a confidence interval for each sample. Which confidence level, 80, 90, 95, or 99, do you think was used? So there's 25 confidence intervals that have been created here. Which confidence level was used? 80, 90, 95, or 99? These are your options, folks. These lines are really hard to look up. 80, 90, I forget where the lines So basically what you need to ask yourself is, what percent of the intervals captured the truth? Do you all have the same picture I have? So here's the true value right here. How many of those touched it? All of them. But 100% is not an option. So which one should I go with? All right, good. 99% because all 
of the intervals captured the true value. Hey guys, why do you think we should never say that we're 100% confident? Because the very next one might miss it. The very next one I do could be the one. You never know. You just never know. Now, can we be 99.9% confident? Yes, we can. Yes. But we should never be 100%. Cool? Cool. All right, last thing here. I think this is the last thing. Why should we settle for 90 or 95% confidence when estimating a parameter? Why don't we try to go for that 100%? Otherwise, it's useless. Exactly. Exactly. Large confidence equals wider interval, which equals less useful estimates. So we have to sacrifice somewhere. We have to say, okay, I'm willing to be 90 or 95% confident for a better, more accurate prediction. All right. What is the risk of being incorrect that is associated with a confidence interval? If you are 95% confident, what is your risk of being wrong? You have a 5% risk of being incorrect. Are y'all okay over there? Because, wow. All right. If you are 90% confident, what is your risk of being incorrect? You have a 10% risk. Okay, cool. If you are, let's try, 86% confident, what's your risk? 14% risk. Okay, cool. Uh, how about if you're 98.5% confident, what's your risk of being wrong? 1.5%. Do you guys see how that works? Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Questions, comments, concerns?